I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. This is the call to worship. And the true worshipers must worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Good morning, all who gather here today, all guests and members. Welcome to worship with the Friendship Baptist Church on this, the fourth Sunday, June 2021. This is the diaconate day for the Friendship Baptist Church, and we celebrate the great work and the service of the deaconess and deacons at the Friendship Baptist Church. I am the Reverend William Lynn Hamilton, the pastor of the Friendship Baptist Church, 407 Union Street, right here in Schenectady, New York. To Deacon Cheryl Dell Loveless, to Deacon Chair Emeritus, Deacon Milton Evans, God bless you. To Deacon S. President, Rosalind Mendez, good seeing you here on this day. Great workers in the Master's Vineyard. To Lay Nicole, Sister Michelle Rodriguez, and Sister Julie Popo, God bless you. Sister Noel Hamilton, God bless you. To our musicians, Brother Azam Hamid, Sister Jocelyn Hamilton, God bless you. Brother Ronald Popo, Itoye Jones, God bless you who are in your residence worshiping with us. And to our guest speaker today, Deacon Charlie Harvey of the Metropolitan Baptist Church in Albany, all the way from Albany, New York. God bless you. Gracious God, we bless you. Gracious God, we love you. We invoke your presence into this place. We welcome you, but we know that you're already here. You're already blessed, and we give you all the honor and praise. And you know what? We just say hallelujah for all that you have done. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on. the highest praise come on say hallelujah oh yeah put your hands together put your hands together god bless you Amen, amen, amen. On this, our annual diaconate day, we will have Deacon Chair Emeritus, Deacon Milton Evans to come forward for a scripture at this time. Then we'll have a prayer from the president of our Deaconess Ministry, Deaconess Rosalind Mendez. Please come in that order. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome again to the Diaconet Day at Friendship Baptist Church. Today I'll be reading for you here in the scripture from 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 8 through 13. Deacons, likewise, are to be worthy of respect sincere, not indulging in much wine 
and not pursuing dishonest gain. They must keep hold of the deep truths of the faith with a clear conscience. They must first be tested. And men, if there is nothing against them, let them serve as deacons. In the same way, their wives are to be women worthy of respect, not malicious talkers, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. A deacon must be the husband of but one wife and must manage his children and his household well. Those who have served well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus. May the Lord have blessed the reading of his holy word. Amen. I will look to the hills for which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we come right now with no shape, form, or fashion. But Lord God, we come right now just to say thank you. Lord God, we just come right now thanking you for all that you have been for us from this day forward. Father God, we come thanking you once again for waking us up this morning with the activity of our limbs. For this, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, that when we placed our feet on the, on the floor, walked into our kitchens, you provided once again, and for this we say thank you. Father God, you provided a way to bring us to the house of worship once again so that we may worship you in spirit and in truth, and for this we say thank you. Father God, you watched over us from this Sunday from this Sunday till last Sunday, and for this we say thank you. You kept us from danger, seen and unseen, and for this we say thank you. We thank you that you walked with us, Lord, you talked with us, you led us and guide us through another worship experience to, to unfold. Mm -hmm. But before we ask for anything, we thank you for everything. Lord God, we just thank you for being God in our lives especially at this time in this place in the, in the universe. Father God, you told us in your word we are to pray, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So Father God, we pray for peace in this world. We pray for peace in this nation. We pray for peace in these states. We pray for peace in our houses of worship. Father God, we need you now more than ever before. Father God, we it's through you we live, move, and have our being. And for this we say thank you. Father God, it has not been an easy year. But, for, but you brought us, you kept us, you comforted us, you provided for us, you covered us when we needed to be covered, you provided for us when we didn't even know where those sources were going to be come from. And for this we say thank you. Father God, we also thank you for comforting us. Lord God, not every experience has been a positive one. But Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will well, that we will learn to come to the understanding that you are sovereign and everything you do, you do you do perfect and with a purpose. Father God, we ask, we stretch our hands out for those who are grieving at this time. Father God, we ask that you would be a comforter as only you can comfort. Father God, we thank you once again for all that you've done. Father God, we say a special prayer for friendship, but not only for friendship. We say a special prayer for all the houses that will gather in your name yes, to yes, worship yes, yes, on yes, this yes. Sunday. Father God, we thank you for a place to be able to worship because there are places in your universe that don't embrace worshiping Christ. So this we say thank you for. Now, Father God, we ask a special blessing for the, for the man of God, 
our speaker, this house. Prepare our hearts, Lord, that everything will be done decent and in order. And Father God, we ask that you will prepare our hearts so that everything that's done and said will fall on fertile ground, Father God, and grow fruit and bear fruit. Father God, help us to be that light on a hill where, where people can come and say, what must I do to be saved? Yes. What must I do to have peace? What must I do to be delivered? Come on now. What must I do to have salvation? What must I do to inherit eternal life? Father God, we need you. Lord, we ask right now that you would forgive us of our sins. Our sins of word, our sins of thought, our, sir, our words of deed. What we said, what we did, and what we didn't do. Father God, we thank you that you made those provisions for us in 1 John 1, 9. That if we confess our sins, you'd be faithful and just and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord God, we love you and we praise you. If we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't say thank you enough. Let us be that light in the hill. Walk with us, lead us, and guide us just as you have done up until this point in time. And Lord God, we'll be careful and always to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for what you have done, for what you will do, and what will you continue to do in the life of your people. This is your servant's prayer, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Deacon Milton Evans, for the scripture. Thank you for the fervent prayer. Deacon Les Rosalind Mendez. God bless you. We do have several announcements. We have several announcements. We continue to solicit your prayers for those who are sick, bereaved, and recovering, the saints of God. We understand that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. It's a promise by God. So you just keep on praying, and he keeps on making a way. He keeps on blessing. So we want to continue to be mindful to pray for the sick, bereaved, and recovering. Amen. We're here. We're worshiping at the 407 Union Street location. We ask that you would meet us next week at this location Sunday. July 4th at 10.30 a.m. A a to worship here at the Friendship Baptist Church at our corporate location. We look forward to seeing you on next Sunday. Amen, somebody. Uh, it is at this time that we would provide an opportunity for you to be a financial blessing unto the Lord. It says that on the first day of the week, we are to give as we have prosper as we've purposed in our heart so let us be a blessing you can't beat god giving no matter how you try for those who are on our website please click the give button and follow the prompts and give as god has purposed in your heart for those who will be writing a check please make your check out to the friendship baptist church and forward it to our 407 union street location we give because we're blessed. We're blessed because we give. Therefore, we are never without. Gracious God, we bless you. We love you. We ask that you bless every gift and every giver. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Come on, everybody. God bless you. God bless you for your faithful giving unto the Lord. Yes. We give in obedience, not obligation. So please, give thanks with your living and your giving. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.
That choir sounds good. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. It is my pleasure to introduce our diaconate day speaker, Deacon Charlie R. Harvey. Deacon chair of the Metropolitan Baptist Church in Albany, New York. Um, Charlie Harvey is a, a very special friend and a brother. Um, he doesn't know it, but uh, he is one of my role models and, and a mentor. Uh, he has a ready word and he applies the word to his life. And if you ask Charlie to pray, he gonna get up and give you a scripture. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna say he's a Bible scholar because he would give me trouble for that. But I will say that he has hidden the word in his heart that he might not sin against God. Right, right. He applies the word. Me and Charlie never disagree. Um, but he says he's, he's my mother's favorite son. And uh, he said it so long that I believe it. <laughs> so her favorite son is here today. He, he, um, my mom was one of his favorites too. Because long before she got sick, he visited her. When she got sick, he was an ever-present stay being an encourager, a word, card, flowers, he was there. Um, and so that tells us that he doesn't just say it, he lives it. I'm going somewhere, that's how he is with the word. He doesn't just say it, he lives it. Like, um, like Larry Hardy, Deacon Harvey is detailed. Like Ronald Popo, Deacon Harvey is principled. Like Deacon Loveless, Deacon Harvey is a great missionary. Like Deacon as Mendez, Deacon Harvey is a prayer warrior. Like Etoya Jones, Deacon Harvey is faithful. Like Deacon Evans, Deacon Harvey watches over the spiritual concerns of the church and a trustworthy servant. Amen. He's equipped to do every good work. And when you, when you put it all together, he's what they call a five-tool deacon. He can do anything. He's a deacon's deacon. Amen. So after a song or sermonic preparation, we will hear from my mother's favorite son, a deacon's deacon, and a servant of God, Deacon Charlie R. Harvey. God bless you. Amen.
Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning and to know that the Spirit of Christ is moving in our hearts from mind to mind, from heart to heart. We're just so grateful and thankful to be here at the Friendship Baptist Church this morning to celebrate that annual diaconate day and certainly to Pastor Wim Lynn Hamilton, to Lady Nicole Hamilton, to Jocelyn, and to Noel and to certainly to uh, uh, Deacon uh, Odell Loveless in her uh, absence right now, and certainly to uh, Deacon Emeritus, Deacon Milton Evans, and certainly to Deaconess Roz Mendez, who is president of the Deaconess Ministry here at uh, Friendship. Uh, I want to thank um, Pastor Hamilton, first of all, for inviting me here today. It, when he called, it was such a surprise. I was almost speechless. You know, that's really hard for me. I always have something to say. But anyway, God is good, and I'm just glad to be here. And certainly to the Friendship uh, Diaconate Ministry, we're here to celebrate you today and, and hopefully we'll encourage you in some way that God will continue to use you as you labor in his most holy and precious name. And certainly to my pastor, Reverend Dr. Lamont Paul Johnson and Lady Angela Johnson, we give them honor also at this time. The scriptures say, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And that's what we do as, as churches in this area. We always fellowship together. We fellowship with, uh, to knowing that we are coming together in unity. For all of us come, no matter which vineyard we planted in, is all for the cause of Christ. All for the cause of Christ. I would like to speak to you this morning from the theme, Mission of the Master, I Must Work. And as a scripture reference, I'm going to use John, the fourth chapter, the, the fourth verse, which reads, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I say in your name, we thank you for another opportunity that you've allowed us to send together in your most holy and precious name, in your most holy and precious house of prayer. We ask Heavenly Father right now that you would just allow your Holy Spirit to anoint everybody in this sanctuary this morning, Heavenly Father. Open our hearts, our minds, our bodies, that we may receive a word from you. We ask that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thine sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Bless these and all blessings in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Before I would proceed, I would like to uh, thank Pastor Hamilton for that very generous and loving introduction and to know that he finally acknowledges that I am the favorite son of, of Deaconess Edna Hamilton and the Reverend Ernest Hamilton. So you finally admitted it from the pulpit, no less. So it must be true. Anyway, we want to thank you for your friendship over the years. I am an adopted son of the Hamilton family, and I'm just so glad to be a part of their family. They've meant so much to me over the years. They've always been supportive and always been loving and kind to me and my children. Thank you. Once again, the mission of the master, I must work. In the gospel according to John, work or works usually refers to the miracles of Jesus. Paul and James uses the word work in a special sense to denote the performance of certain outward acts by which men seek to be accepted of God. Paul contrasts these works with the faith in Christ through which the believer is justified apart from all works of merit. James makes it clear, however, that vital faith will always manifest itself in works and that without such a manifestation, faith is dead. Other scriptures in the Bible also make it clear that the performance of good works are an evidence of the new life in Christ Jesus. 
This chapter of John relates the story of how Jesus gave sight to a, a man born blind. The scriptures tell us that one Sabbath day as Jesus was making his way to the temple, accompanied by his disciples, he saw, perhaps begging at the temple gate, a man blind from his birth. Touched by this man's misfortune, doubtless Jesus inquired how long he had been blind. The disciples also had an interest in the man's case, but the incident shows how the master teacher and disciples look upon the same scene and receive understanding as different as vision is to blindness. This story offers to the disciples a neat little problem of theology. If, it, if there were heredity causes for the man's blindness and it were visited upon him for the sins of his parents, why should this innocent child suffer? But if it were a punishment for his own sin, how could it be known before he was born that he was to be a sinner above all other individuals? Mm -hmm. To the contrary, Jesus had little interest for such an unprofitable speculation. Jesus warns that the night soon comes when all will be enveloped in the darkness wherein no man can work. He does not see fit to discuss the deep and dark questions of the origin and entrance of evil into the world. Instead, he pushes, pushes back his robe and begins to mix, mix the clay with the saliva. Then Jesus anointed the young man's sightless eyes. In other words, Jesus went to work. The disciples saw a penalty and a punishment. Jesus saw an opportunity to help a man and glorify God at the same time. In this brief space, this man's blind darkness would blaze with miraculous illumination, revealing Christ as the light of the world. A question for the diaconate ministry here today at Friendship. When Pastor Hamilton presents the vision that God has given him for the Friendship Baptist Church, how do you respond? Do you evaluate and analyze it to death? Or do you embrace the vision, pray for the vision, that the vision will become fruitful? Are you like Jesus' disciples? You debate how the fire started in the house rather than to save the family and the house from certain death and destruction. As God's children and servants of the king, how have we worked or labored to glorify God? As we began our life in Christ, the first call we heeded was the call to salvation. Next, we heeded or should have heeded a call to service and, to, and a call to bring the good news of our Lord and Savior to them who need to hear it so that they too may be saved. Next, we needed to heed the call to submission and to separation. We are no longer being formed in the world's image but are being transformed to be able to do God's work and will as we live holy lives and are living sacrifices to him. All of these things are possible only as our minds are renewed daily by saturating ourselves in the word of God and by getting to know him better and better day by day. The scriptures tell us that many are called, but few are chosen. John 15, 16 states that I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatso, whatever you ask in my name, I will give it to you. Why then are so many, why then are so few chosen to perform God's will? Well, some don't hear the call, they are spiritually deaf. Some don't heed the call, they are spiritually lazy. Some don't feed the call, they are spiritually anorexic. Some don't feed the call, they are spiritually numb. And, the, and some forget the call, they have spiritual amnesia. Maybe this is why Jesus tells us in Matthew 9, 37, 38, that the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. My brothers and sisters, the night is fast approaching when no one would be able to work for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Are we working the works of him who sent us, 
Or are we being rich fools, laying up much goods for ourselves in the form of large bank accounts, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and wardrobes with the latest fashions? Would Jesus have to repeat to us the same statement found in Luke 12, 20, 21? Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall these things be which thou hast provided? Of all the funerals I have been to recently, not one of the deceased took anything with them that they acquired while he on this earth. Jesus did tell us, however, that there is a mansion promised to us in heaven and that we should be sending mortgage payments on ahead in the form of soul saved and work we did in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God has placed us here to be of service in whatever capacity our talents allows us to perform and expects us to occupy until he comes. My question to you, brothers and sisters, is how well are you occupying? In evaluating the work that we as Christians are doing, and in particular the work that we as deacon and deaconess are doing, and considering how can we be more efficient and more effective, let's take a brief look at the story of the spies who were sent to evaluate the promised land. In Numbers 13, 2 and 20, it states that send the men that they may search the land of Canaan. Of every tribe of thy fathers shall they send a man, every one a ruler among them, and see the land and be ye of good courage and bring up the fruit of the land. One man was chosen from each tribe, just as we were chosen as to be deacon, deaconess. Saved by God's magnificent grace, the children of Israel had walked through the divided Red Sea. They had seen God's hand directly affecting their lives. In fact, they owed their very lives to him. And like them, we have the obligation to God to for the redemption of our souls. Then came the mission or work assignment, spy out the land. It wasn't their assignment to decide whether to go or not to go forward into the land. It was simply to go and find out what the factual situation was in terms of food, supplies, fortification, routes of travel, and conditions of the roads. The victory wasn't to be theirs, but God's. Their reports brought back depending on the eye of the beholder. Those who saw the land as promised by God were glowing in their praise of the structure of the cities, the production fields, and orchards. They could hardly wait to occupy the land. However, those who saw through the eyes of man reported giants, sturdy walls, with danger at every corner. They wanted to go back to the security of being slaves where men provided for their daily needs. Likewise, we are called out to join in the work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The same things happen. All are saved by God's grace, but only a few sense God's power and provision of prayer, support, time, and love for the lost, combined with a sense of urgency to reach the lost in, in our every expanding mission field. Why is this? Because men today, as then, are deceived by Satan, the father of lies, into believing that God is not in everything. God has been legislated and, legislated and eliminated out of our businesses, our schools, our courts, and our homes. We have become Sunday Christians, but not everyday Christians. We are thankful for our salvation, but not ready to submit to being the workers and stewards we are called to be. Paul tells us in, in 1 Corinthians 4 and 2 that moreover it is required of stewards that a man be faithful. If we are to make our work productive, we need committed men and women who are willing to be the stewards that we are called to be. If we don't, the night will surely come and catch us with our work undone. My brothers and sisters, there is much to be done. Paul writes the most personal of his letters to the church at Philippi from prison. The dominant note or theme of this letter is joy 
and reveals Paul's as radiant amid the storms and strife of his life. Paul says, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press to the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You see, Paul forgot those things which were behind so as not to become content with what measure of grace that had been given to him. And he reached forth daily towards the focal point of the vision that God had given him. And to the church at Colossae, Paul writes, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Then he tells us to set our affections on things above, not on the things of the earth. As a runner never stops short of the finish line, but continues with as much speed as possible to the finish, we in God's employ must still be pressing on with holy desires and hopes and constant endeavors and labor. The war is won, but the battle is far from over. We have much to do, and each of one of us is needed to do our part. Our commitment is not to the diaconate ministry, but to the Lord Jesus Christ and through the work that we are called to do in his name as deacons and deaconess. Paul tells us to watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. And as I close, I would like to leave you with a short story. A big dog saw a little dog chasing after his tail and asked, why are you chasing your tail? Said the little dog, I have mastered philosophy. I have solved the problems of the universe, which no dog before me has done. I have learned that the best thing for a dog is happiness, and that happiness is in my tail. Therefore, I am chasing my tail, and when I catch it, I shall have happiness. Said the old dog to the little dog, my son, I too have paid attention to the problems of the universe in my own weak way and have formed some opinions of my own. I too have judged that happiness is a fine thing for a dog and that happiness is in my tail. I have noticed, however, that when I chase it, my tail keeps running away from me. But when I go about my business, it comes after me. Likewise, Jesus told us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. My brothers and sisters, God has, does not want us to proceed aimlessly through this life. He does, however, want us to be steadfast in our service to him, unmovable in our commitment, always abounding in the work of our Lord. For the night of our life might well come, leaving you and me with our work undone. First Timothy 3.13 says, For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. May God continue to keep you in his divine favor and divine providence as you labor, work in his most holy and precious name. May God be blessed. We've heard a word from God's word, biblically true, theologically sound, and it tells us who are saved that we have some work to do. We are in the master's vineyard, but while we're in the vineyard, we have to work. It's a great word for our deaconess and our deacons but it's a great word for all who are saved we have to be about the father's business God's mission for us 
is that we will lead others to Christ. It is his plan and it is our mission that we would be about the Father's business. Some of us have heard it, but have become spiritually deaf. Uh, some of us have heard the word, but we don't feed it, so we're spiritually anorexic. We have to be about our Father's business. But the one thing he said also was that the work is inspired by Christ. You must come to know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. As we heard Deaconess Mendez prayer, we pray that somebody might say, how may I be saved? How may I inherit eternal life? How may I come to Christ? How might I have everlasting life? How might I go to heaven? Well, I got one word for you. His name is Jesus. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. You want to be saved? Come to Jesus. You want salvation? Come to Jesus. You want to live in paradise in heaven? Come to Jesus. You want the Holy Spirit to indwell you? Come to Jesus. If you would accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you shall be saved. For we who are saved, we have to share that same message. Lord knows we got more work to do. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. Man is a sinner in need of a Savior and salvation. Salvation is through Jesus Christ. If you would receive him as Savior and Lord today, you shall be saved. Your life will be brand new. You will be indwelled by the Holy Spirit. God bless you. God bless you. If all hearts and minds are clear. Amen. As saints of God, we offer Christ to you. Come on, come on, come on. We pray that you made Jesus your choice. Amen. And if you made Jesus your choice, you are saved and eternally saved. God bless you. God bless you. We want to once again thank Deacon Charlie R. Hart for such a powerful message. My only regret is that he didn't leave that manuscript right here because I, I, I could try to do something with that in two weeks when you forget what he talked about. I think I could do something with that. God bless you. It was so much in depth. And some of those stories, I got to wait till I go to somebody else's church because friendship will know where I got it from, Charlie. <laughs> but thank you so much. You know what? If it's word, it's word. I can repeat it. Amen? If it's word, it's word. Friendship, you will hear that again. God bless you. Uh, congratulations, deaconess and deacons, on this your day. Um, we thank you 
for participating to Deacon Evans and Deaconess Ross Mendez. God bless you for the great work and for being here on this day and all those who are generally assembled. Would you like a closing word? You sure? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear. Gracious God, we bless you. Gracious God, we love you. We thank you for this marvelous day that we worship you and celebrate those who do great work. Bless us as we go forward. Now unto him who was able to keep us from falling and to present us before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now henceforth and everyone who loved the Lord said amen. God bless you, man. Don't last no way.